She's definitely not sleeping on the job. Well, actually, she did. Angela's job is all about sleep this morning. She joins us live from the Bellin Sleep Clinic. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, everybody. I'd like you to take a look at this video. Last week, I spent the night here at the Bellin Sleep Clinic in Green Bay. Um, it was quite an interesting experience. They even... We even had a photographer come in and he was right there when I woke up the next morning. I really got a first-hand account of what it's like. Uh, the nurse even sitting down with me the next morning going over my results. Definitely a, a really neat experience and I did it to learn how a sleep clinic works because this morning we're talking about common sleep disorders and a very very common one is called sleep apnea fortunately I left here I had nothing wrong with me but a lot of people wake up and they find out that they could have some form of sleep apnea I'd like you to uh, meet Beth Wagner she's a nurse practitioner good morning to you good morning how common is sleep apnea sleep apnea is a very common sleep disorder um, one out of nine men in Wisconsin and one out of four women in Wisconsin have it. Unfortunately, 20 million people across the United States have sleep apnea, and it goes undiagnosed or underdiagnosed most of the time. What is it? Sleep apnea is during the night people have breath pauses, and what that is related to is a a collapse of soft tissue over their airway that leads to oxygen drops. And what happens is the brain, as a safety mechanism, wakes the patient up repeatedly. Can you show us that on a chart here? Absolutely. This is someone who has severe sleep apnea. This is a three-minute segment, and each one of these purple shows an apnea or a breath pause with oxygen drops. And so you can see up here, the green lines are each time that person woke up to take a breath. Wow, so there are, people are actually kind of gasping for air in the middle of the night they're waking up. Absolutely. Who's at risk for this? People who are overweight are at risk. There's also um, people who have coronary artery disease, heart disease, irregular heart rhythm, and there, people who have structural abnormalities of their face or a small jaw. There's, there's not a particular group, but there's certainly people who are at higher risk. Mm -hmm. I want to head into a room across the hall. This is just one of many different sleep rooms that they have here at the clinic. Uh, Beth, could you tell us what some telltale signs are? So, so if somebody's watching and thinking, hmm, I wonder if I have that. Absolutely. One of the most common complaints that we have is snoring or a bed partner saying, listen, I hear you snore and then there's a big pause in your breathing. Other symptoms are feeling really fatigued in the morning. Even if you feel like you've gotten a good night of sleep, eight hours of sleep, you wake up and you feel fatigued all day long as well. Um, high blood pressure that they're having trouble controlling. If you go into your primary care physician and you're feeling tired all the time, that's a very common one as well. Okay, and this is a common treatment. Uh, why don't you, Pete's going to put this on me. Why don't you tell, tell us what this is? What this is is something called continuous positive airway pressure. There are several different kinds of masks that people can use and what it does is it allows um, it humidified air to act as a splint of the airway so that it's not collapsing down and your oxygen levels aren't dropping during the night waking you up repetitively. So you would go to bed with this every night? You would go to bed with that every night. Can you hear the air or not? Uh -huh. How do I think so. Yeah. It feels very different. I feel like this would be hard for me to get used to. Is that the case? Some patients find that it's very easy to get used to, and they actually find it very comforting because it's helping keep their airway open. It's, it's more difficult to tolerate when you're awake, but it's all, there's also a process of desensitization, which takes anywhere from four weeks to eight weeks, where you get more and more comfortable, and it improves your sleep quality. Okay, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback on Facebook, email from people who are interested in sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think this is really important. What are the consequences of not seeking help or not getting treatment? They're very significant. Uh, the, one of the most important is quality of life. People's work performance is affected. They feel miserable during the day, but there's very severe health consequences as well. Heart attack, stroke, depression, anxiety, inability to concentrate during the day increased risk of motor vehicle accident, obesity, and sudden death from heart attack or stroke are the most devastating. Okay, so if you think that 
maybe you're one of those people, just maybe, um, the Bellin website has a link to this little test that you can take oh, okay. that you can answer some simple questions. And we've put that link on our website, fox11online.com. Just click on the Good Day Wisconsin tab and just click into my story, and that's what you'll see. But um, really, it, it can be deadly. So you, you really got to, right. and it's common. So yeah. and that I does look, to take this off. It looks a little uncomfortable, but what peace <laughs> yeah. of mind you're getting from it, too, might exactly. help you yeah. overcome the, that, the first awkwardness mm. of it. Absolutely. Very interesting. Ange, thanks so much. Yep, see you we'll later. We'll back to sleep now. I will. We don't need you for a while. <laughs>